Ochoku Oba PhD. By vocation, I am a minister also of the Word and Sacrament. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Religious and Cultural Studies, University of Port Harcourt. The course we are studying today is the Hebrew Old Testament. The Hebrew Old Testament. When we are looking at the Hebrew Old Testament, we are looking at the words that we are used in writing the Bible, not just the Hebrew that is spoken now, rather the Hebrew that was used in writing the Old Testament. Someone will ask, what is the essence of this course? The essence of it is because an inquirer into the field of Old Testament needs to understand the language that was used in writing the Bible. When you read and understand the language, it will help you to know and interpret by yourself without being somebody who is listening to somebody who is interpreting to somebody who is interpreting. Rather, you will be somebody who will be conversant with the words of the Old Testament. As you read and understand the Hebrew, you will be able to interpret yourself without depending on someone else. When we divide a particular word, we call sin and shame, we'll get to know it into two, we'll get 23, otherwise it is 22 Hebrew consonants. Remember, the Hebrew is a consonantal language. The vowels were added much later to add pronunciation and to add understanding further the word. Otherwise, it was a consonantal language. But as we go on, we will get to understand the word Hebrew Old Testament. We will need to start from the Hebrew alphabet itself. We have tried to explain that the Hebrew alphabet, we have 22 of them. They are just like the English language. If you look at the slide, you will see the representation of them. In the representation of them, you will see the first thing written there is Aleph. Aleph. Let's look at the way it's written, it's pronounced in English. Aleph. After Aleph, we will see Bet. Then we will see Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Wow, Zion, Het, Tet, Yod, Kaf. Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samek, Ayin, Be, Saje, Kof, Res, Sin, Shin, and Tau. I go that again by explaining. Aleph, somebody will think Aleph is A, as you see it represented in the slide there. Aleph is not A, but Aleph is a comma written to the top. It's a comma written to the top. That is what Aleph is. It's a comma by transliteration. Aleph is a comma written to the top. And by transliteration, Bet is B. Bet is B. Gimel is G. Dalet is D. Hey is H. Wow is W. Zion is Z. Het is H by transliteration, but with a dot underneath it, as you are seeing on the slide. Tet is T with a dot underneath. Yod is Y. Kaf is K. Lamed is L. Mem is M. Nun is N. Samek is S. Ayin is not A, rather it is rough breathing of the, the, when you convert, when you write, if I'm speaking rough breathing, I'll be talking Greek. When you write, instead of facing your comma, this side, you face it the other side, as you are seeing there in this light, that is the transliteration of Ayin. P is P, Sage is S with dot underneath, Kof is Q, Res is R, Sin is S. We'll get to discuss Sin and Shin, but let's take it that Sin is S and Tau is T, 
Tao is tea. Now, having said that to us, because we will need to do the transliteration, we will do, need to look at the numerical value. When you look at the numerical value as seen in the slide there, you will see that Allah by numerical value is 1. By numerical value, bet is B. So when you are writing Aleph, when you are writing and you are saying, what is the numerical value of bet? You say it is 2. When you see bet and you say it is numerical that they are counting, you will see that it is 2. Gimel is 3. Dalet is 4. He is 5. As you are following in the slide. Wow is 6. Zion is 7. Het is 8. Tet is 9. Yod is 10. Now when we get 1 to 10, we don't continue by saying 11, 12, 13 and the rest of them. Because 11, 12, 13 will be a combination. But you now see that calf, as you see in the slide there, instead of being 11, it's now 20. Because we haven't gotten to 1 to 10, we will now say 10, 11, 20, 30, 40. So as you are seeing in the slide, calf is 20. Lamed is 30. Mem is 40. Nun is 50. Samek is 60. Ayin is 70. Be is 80. Nine T is Saje. And Kof is 100. Then having gotten to 100, we will see that what we have is 200, 300, and 400. Rest is 200. Sin or Shin is 300. And Tau is 400. Somebody may ask, how do we get the other bits that we are supposed to talk about? That's the compound numbers as represented. If you look at the examples we have given there, you will see the compound numbers as represented. You will see that 11 is 10 plus 1. Look at the slide. You see it is 10 plus 1 that will give you 11. 10 plus 1. Since Hebrew is written from right to left, we will now see that it is right, 10, then the next word is 2, making 12. 10 plus 3. Remember, writing 10 before 3, writing from right to left, not 3 plus 10. That is 13. And so on, as you see there on the slide. When you want to write 21, it is, look at it on the slide there, it is 20 plus 1. When you want to write 31, it is 30 plus 1. And 32 will be 30 plus 2, as you see there. And 33, and so on. When you want to write 100 plus 1, it is 100, which is plus 1. When you want to write 111, or when you want to write, look at the slide there. Even when you want to write 500, you will see that it is 400 plus 100. When you want to write 1000, it is 400 plus 400 plus 200, making 1000. So we see that in the compound of tens and units, there are two exceptions to the above system. That is 15 and 16. 15 is not Y and H. It's not 10 and 5. 16 is not 10 and 6. A combination of them will give you the name of Yahweh. So the Hebrew people did not do that. Rather they did 9 and 6 giving you 15 and 9 and 7 giving you 16 because they would not want to tamper or come near with anything that will represent the name of God. So in the combination of 10 plus 1, 11 plus um, 10 plus 2, 10 plus 3, 10 plus 4, one would have assumed that you have 10 plus 5 to make 15. But you say no, it is rather 9 plus 6 because a combination of 10 plus 5 will give you something that represents Yahweh's name. 
which the Hebrew man will not compromise. And 10 plus 6 will also give you something that represents Yahweh's name, which they did not compromise. So they rather write 9 plus 6 or 10 plus 7. That is how we go by the alphabet. I'm sure as an inquirer you will make our time to go through the alphabet getting from alpha till you get to the very end of it getting from going from aleph bet gimel dalet he wow zayin het tet yod kaf lamed mem nun samek ayin pe kuf res sin shin and tau we have also talked of the transliteration we have also talked of the numerical value of these words. Then, if you look, you would have seen how they are represented, the form that they are represented. Look at the slide again. You see the form that they are represented. These are the words of the Hebrew um, letters. And this is how they are represented as you see them on the slide. So, haven't gone this far i think anybody who wants to understand the hebrew language who has gone through the aspects of the number of the uh, alphabet would have understood the intricacies they may look difficult at the beginning like everything but for now try to understand these words when we go deeper, you will understand. But one thing good about it is that the same word that is the form is the same word that is the representation, that is the transliteration, the numerical value. So it is easy when you understand one, you have understood all.